Good morning, everyone. This is already the Vintage Stitcher. So, today I am going to show you three different applique methods. This is for quilting, or if you wanted to do a small project, um, they're basic cotton um, fabric applique methods. And we're going to be using this pattern here by Annie's Craft Club today um, to to demonstrate this. I'm going to be doing this little um, pot holder with the ladybug in the sun and we're going to be doing this pumpkin one. Okay, so <clears throat> there's three different ways of applique. One goes from all machine, so you use only your sewing machine. One goes from, you could use the second method, you could use only your sewing machine or you can use sewing machine and hand method. And then the third one is hand method only, okay? So there's three different ways of doing applique. <clears throat> the first way we're gonna do is, um, we're going to do the all machine method, all right? So I have prepped my background fabrics, all right? And I love this technique where, with the machine one, where you kinda layer, you layer your fabrics, and um, we're gonna be quilting right through this. And I am going to set up hopefully going to be able to set up my camera so that I could show you what I'm doing over on my machine too because that's a real integral part of how to do this applique okay <clears throat> now with th this first method we are going to use fusible web okay the heat and bond fusible web just like in the 80s and 90s when we were applying the fusible appliques to our sweatshirts and covering them with puffy paint all right um when i use um this is the brand i use i use heat and bond light um i go with very very light in this in this um these situations on all the applique because you want your needle to be able to go through this without getting too gummed up okay so you want to go with the lightest um, interfacing and the lightest fusible web that you have or that you can find. All right. So the first thing to do is you want to prep your background and you want that to be nice and wrinkle free. Okay. So we're going to set that aside. Here is the pattern that we have that we're going to be using. All right. Um, and what you're going to do is you are going to trace each, each element onto the fusible web, all right? So like we need two wings and one body part and then the sunshine and we need four petals, okay? So I've already started that. I've got my body, my body, my two wings. I've got two petals. I've got my sunshine here and I'm gonna finish tracing two more petals to kind of show you that. So you are going to trace the pattern onto the paper side. Okay, the paper side, um, not the glue side. The glue side is going to get attached to your fabric. So you're gonna trace these, I'm gonna trace these last two petals. And these need to come down a little bit more. I just realized I made that mistake. They don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna show you, They. I'm not a good tracer. I am not a good tracer at all. Um, and you just kind of squeeze it in here. Of course, you want to maximize your interface or your fusible web as much as possible. You don't want to waste. So it doesn't matter what direction they go in. They just need to be in here. Okay. Um, I got to grab my paper scissors. Hang on one second. You don't want to use... You don't want to use your good fabric scissors on this. I mean, we are going to be cutting fabric and it's going to go through some paper, but when you're just cutting the paper paper, use your old scissors, okay? So then you're going to cut these pieces apart because this is going to be the sun and you're just going to kind of do a loose, a loose trim on them. You don't want to cut on the lines quite yet, okay? So, and then I kind of just cut these out Loose, just kind of a loose, 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 loose. And then this little body here and the wings are separate color fabrics, okay? So everything is gonna be a separate color 
fabric on this. So you don't want to waste your fabrics either. So I kind of do a loose cut on these so that I can um, maximize my fabric also. All right, so now I need to look at the pattern. See my colors. All right, so my sunshine is yellow. So I have my stacks of fabrics over here. All right, I have my stacks of fabrics here and my iron. See, my iron. Um, medium heat setting. You don't want this on full blast. Trust me, you'll melt it, you'll distort it, you'll be unhappy. So what you're going to do for this sunshine is you are going to press it nice and smooth, okay, on the wrong side of the fabric. The wrong side of the fabric. You are going to put the glue side down onto your fabric, and you're going to press that. So this is wrong side to glue side, okay? And you're going to press that. And that glue is going to adhere to that fabric just like this. Okay. So now we're going to do that for all of our pieces. So I've got my little, <clears throat> my little body here. What color is my body? My body is black. Just like you can use a little steam. It, I mean, it helps, it helps, um, like firm things up a little bit. So there's my body. Set my fabrics aside because I will be using them elsewhere. Um, my wings are red. So I'm taking my red fabric, same thing on the back side, and I'm doing my little wings. This is great if you have a huge scrap, scrap bin. Applique is fun when you have a lot of scraps. Um, I don't do a lot of applique because I have a lot of yardage, and I, I really feel guilty. I don't know why. Cutting into yardage when I just need little tiny pieces like this. So, I don't know. It's weird. I have a weird thing going on here. Um, what other color do I need? Okay, and then white for the, for the um, leaves. So then I have my white, okay? So same thing here. I take my white and I'm gonna press it on. All right. Easy peasy, right? All right, so now I have all my pieces ironed on to my fabrics. Fold this up, put this out of the way, set this over here so I don't, that's the next project. Okay, so this is where, yes, you're cutting on paper, but you're cutting through your fabric, so you need some good, sharp, fabric scissors and you're just going to cut right on the lines of all these pieces okay and this is going to feel like you're back in kindergarten again it's all good i'm going to set this aside we're kind of done with this pattern for right now so you cut out all these pieces and you just Cut, 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 cut. And trim. And this is fun. You, if you're doing a big quilt, this is something that I, I get all my pieces. You know, I'll put on a good movie and I'll trace all my pieces. And then I'll press all my pieces. And then I'll iron all my pieces. I mean, applique is not, not a quick process. Um, but it's extremely gratifying. Each step is very, very gratifying and, and very satisfying in how it turns out. Okay, so I'm just going to continue cutting. We're almost done. I never know when to pause the video or if I should just let you guys watch me work. I don't know. What do you think? Sometimes I get quiet. 
I don't want there to be a pause in the video. But yet, I want, and I want you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's all of our little pieces. And they don't have to be perfect. They're not going to be perfect. The way I'm going to show you how we finish them, I'm cutting this big one, okay? All right, and then when you have your edges like this, you don't want to save that fabric because that's going to have glue on it. So you want to get rid of that. You don't want to put that back in your stash and then accidentally press it because if that glue gets on your iron, ugh, you're just not going to be happy. Um, this glue is messy, so you, you do have to be somewhat careful. Okay, all right. So now we have all of our pieces cut, all of our pieces for our little, our little ladybug, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my background fabric now <clears throat> and you're gonna kinda take your placement picture and you're gonna take, I kinda go off my picture picture. There's not really a good picture, There's a, the label is over it. But what you're going to do is, <clears throat> you're going to peel the paper off of all of these backings or all of this fabric, all right? You're gonna peel the paper off and you're going to kind of place this where you want it, okay? So like this one, I'm gonna put this over here kind of as, it's hard to see through the label, but you're going to place it on your background piece the way it's piece are laid out on your pattern okay and they kind of give you the dotted lines and stuff like that to use now all of these little petals they're going to show you that they're kind of tucked under they're tucked under the edge of this okay so we're going to tuck this so this is right with the edge of the background and then we're gonna tuck this. And you basically lay them out how you like them, too. I mean, this is, you know, sometimes the paper and the glue doesn't stick, so you can always go back and repress that. You know, I cut all my fingernails off and that didn't work out well for me. There's another little glue piece, and we're tucking that under. Okay. And it's very clingy. It's got lots of static. All right, and then we're tucking that under. And you're kind of just getting these placed how you want them, how, how it's visually appealing to you, okay? static playing ah! <clears throat> winter in the UP but no it, it does that to everybody um, so you kind of just get them laid where you like them okay kind of tuck your edges under the way it states in the pattern all right we're gonna do our little ladybug here I don't do a whole lot of applique it's not one of my favorite techniques so this one, they're kind of putting it like this. And now remember, we're gonna be making room for some um, antennas and buttons and stuff like that. So, you kind of just follow the pattern. And the wings are touching. Oh, out a little bit more. So you just kind of play around with it. Up to the head more so you kind of have to kind of watch your pattern watch what you're doing and we're bringing it up like that okay so we have it all kind of laid out on our on our block okay what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over and now you're gonna transfer this a lot of times I'll do this right on my ironing board so I don't have to move it around too much 
but you're going to press this all in place, okay? Just like this. You're gonna leave it, you're not gonna transfer anything, and you're going to press it. And you're gonna kind of start in the middle, you're gonna hold it for a few seconds, and then work your way out. Press in the middle and work your way out. So I'm gonna transfer that over here. Because if you start in the middle, it kind of glues, like it hits all the pieces. It hits everything and kind of tacks everything all into one a little bit so it's not shifting and moving as you're as you're moving your iron around okay all right and don't get real hot with this don't press for a real long time the longer you hold that iron on that glue adhesive the stiffer it's going to become and the harder it's going to be to do your um your um sewing stitch through this okay so I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you what we're going to do because we are going to stitch around all of these edges, all right? And I'm going to stitch with a white thread. <clears throat> you can use, I'm going to use a white thread in my top because I like white thread and uh, the backing color in my bobbin, all right? Now, a lot of people like to use matching threads, so you could use yellow here, white here, red, black. You can, you can change your threads. Feel free to change your threads. Um, you can use all black thread. I've seen that too. If you're doing like a primitive, you could do this with just all black thread or dark brown thread or whatever color. Um, this one is nice and bright. I'm going to use all white on this to stitch it um, because I think that's what's going to look best. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here. We're going to move over to the sewing machine and I am going to show you how to do this on the machine. All right, let me find my little button here. Okay, we'll be back. All right, so we are back at the machine. Now I have my sewing machine set up. Everybody's sewing machine is different, okay? So you know your sewing machine best. There's a couple different stitches that you can use for this. You can use just a plain zigzag stitch, okay? And you set your zigzag stitch to what appeals to you. All right, it could be wider, it could be narrower, it could be whatever. You can use a satin stitch, which is just a zigzag stitch, which is very tight and very close together, okay? And then you would trace along this. My favorite stitch, let me grab my scissors. I, my favorite stitch is the buttonhole stitch. Um, I bought this machine specifically for the buttonhole stitch, and it looks like... Let me see this, okay, on my machine. So I always do a practice. I always get my machine set up and I do a practice stitch on a scrap piece of fabric, okay? So hopefully that's in focus. I kind of play with my lengths and my widths and I kind of get an idea of how many stitches it's stitching before it jumps over and grabs that fabric, okay? if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go on here, I'm gonna do this on my practice fabric and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So when I start it, it's gonna do a fixed stitch, fixed stitch. And then we're gonna go along and go one, two, grab, one, two, grab, one, two, grab, one, two, grab. Okay, so that is what it's gonna look like. Hopefully that focuses in. Okay, so when you're bringing your piece over here to applique, and we're gonna start, I always start with the biggest piece first so I can get kind of comfortable with the feel of what's going on with my machine. I always do the easiest portion of it first. Then I work into the smaller details. Um, of like the smaller stuff because then I've already kind of got a feel of how my how things are going to go. So when you start your applique on this machine on a machine, you want your needle. It's hard to explain. You want those the one two stitch to be on the very edge of your applique fabric right here. Okay, and then you want it to jump over and grab into the fabric and then come back. One, two, grab. One, two, grab. Does that make sense? So 
it's always best to start on a nice a straight edge or a sloping curve so you can kind of get a feel of this and I always start kind of off the piece so I'm starting way over here and it's going to do my locking stitch it's one two grab one two grab and you just kind of go around okay and it will grab and it will grab and then you can kind of get comfortable with this and then you just kind of guide oh, my I'm sorry my hands in the way you're gonna guide this around just keeping that needle on the very very edge of that applique okay And you're just going to keep going and going and going and going and going. <clears throat> and yes, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do corners. <laughs> Everybody panics. Oh my God, how do you do corners? Corners are not hard. They're not hard. They just take a little bit more time than what. Okay. Okay. And then you can trim it off. And this is what it's gonna look like, okay? And you have a nice, neat, even stitch. And that's gonna hold that applique down in place. It's gonna keep that fabric from fraying. Um, it, it, this is, these are just a joy, to, fun to do. So this is something that you can get very rhythmic. So now I'm gonna start doing these little half circles because I want to show you how to do, what I try to do is I try and keep it in a flow where I don't have to sit and trim my my threads because I'm lazy that way. So we're gonna start over here on this little flower petal, okay? And we're gonna do that locking stitch. And you're gonna come in, it's gonna do that locking stitch. You're keeping that needle right along the edge of that flower petal, that white fabric and you're slowly, slowly going around the curves. Now these are a little tighter curve. So when you're turning your fabric, let me show you, you always want to turn your fabric when the needle is down and on the edge of the fabric. You always want it to be on a one or a two and then you can pick up and you can turn. You never want your needle to be on the grab. To turn you always want it to be on the very edge turn and then let it grab one two one grab one two grab one two needle down turn never ever do the turn your fabric on the grab part okay you will be unhappy because it's going to then throw off where your stitching is see I need to oh see now it's going to a grab so I'm gonna come back I'm gonna wait until it's down in the down position then I'll turn all right and you just keep following along and I'm going kind of slow so that you guys can see what goes on okay so now we're coming to a kind of an intersection okay so you want this to come down and watch what you're doing grab and it's coming down two it's gonna let it grab and then let it come back into the down position okay got that down position now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're just going to spin it so that you can go around that next one. But you always want to make sure it's in that down position. And then it's gonna go here, grab, grab, grab. And then you just continue on. Okay? This is very, very easy. It takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of time. But this technique, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, and this technique lends itself really well to small pieces. Um, 
the next technique I'm going to show you is going to lend itself a little bit better to larger, more open pieces and pieces with maybe a, like a little bit more um, curve to it. Okay, so it's doing a grab, down, down, oh, my foot slipped, grab, down, turn, and then it's going to grab that next one. It's going round and round and round. Um, so this one is great when it comes to like small pieces, like these little butterflies and stuff like that, that are a little bit more technical. Um, this technique is great. And you can mix techniques. Don't, don't go, oh, well, I'm using Fusible Web on this and that's all I'm using. You can mix any of these techniques that I'm showing you today all in one piece. doesn't really matter. I, uh, you know... I, I've mixed techniques, so I'm going to speed this up a little so I can continue to show you what I'm doing. Grab, needle down, turn. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, the buttonhole does not hide the imperfections as well as like the satin stitch does. So if you're going to, um, if your cutting is not perfect or if it's very jagged or you want to cover up an imperfection, you have a little bit more ability to cover up like rough edges and not so perfect curves or not so perfect cuts with your satin stitch by um, lengthening and with making that satin stitch a little bit bigger or smaller. So um, I'm not a fan of it. I get really bored with it. So that's why this, this technique, okay, I'm gonna do a locking and I'm gonna trim that off. Um, that's why this technique is works best for me with the buttonhole. Okay, so now I like this technique on small projects like this because I have my backing and my batting layered in here. Um, I also have my walking foot on here. So when I'm doing this, I'm quilting through the project. Okay, now if you're doing like a whole quilt and you're doing block by block, you definitely don't want to do this. You would just do um, this piece here, the top piece, um, and you may want to put some fusible interfacing on it just on the back of it just to kind of stiffen it up and give it a little bit of stability. Um, you can do that, but with this technique, I, I used my walking foot and I quilted right through the back. Okay. So I'm going to continue on with this, and then we are going to move on to the next technique. And then um, I'm going to show you the finished product. Um, there will be a picture of it, and then um, I will show you the finished product at the end. All right. So hope you learned something about Fusible Web Applique. Um, if you have any questions, please comment down in the comment box, and I will be happy to answer them for you. All right. Okay. And we are back. I am going to show you the second way to do um, applique um, for a quilt or a small project. And we are going to work on this little pumpkin, okay? Now this way can be a combination of machine and hand. Um, it is best to use a machine uh, in this first part if you have it. You can do it all by hand. Um, it just would take you a little bit longer. Okay, so we are going to be working on that. I have my pattern here, all right? In this case, what you're going to do is you're going to use fusible interfacing, okay? This is the stuff that we use on the back of our um, pillows, our finished projects when we're making pillows or t-shirt quilts or... It's just that fusible interfacing, that non-woven or woven fusible interfacing. Um, I have a package here of what I like to use for applique because again, you want it to be super light. So I just use a, like, this is from Walmart, the Pellon brand, the 9906F, the fusible, the sheer weight interfacing. It's super, super light. It's got glue on one side, it's smooth on the other, okay? So what we're going to do is on the smooth side, let me set this down, on the smooth side, you are going to trace your pattern. 
and I've done that already here. It's, it might be a little hard to see, okay? You are going to trace your pattern. Okay, so, and I might do this two different ways. I might do the third technique with the stem and the leaf. So I think I'm just gonna show you how to do this technique with the pumpkin. This technique works really well with large, open kind of um, uh, open pieces. It works best with that. When it's smaller and detailed like this, it's, it's really hard to get into these little corners with this technique. You can do it. You just have to have a lot of patience with it. Um, I tend to like to use like the fusible web um, method or I'm going to show you how to do like a hand a hand method okay I'll probably show you on that little stem how to use like the the hand sewing method where there's no sewing machine involved at all okay so I have my pumpkin right um let's set this aside I have my backing piece my background piece that we're going to attach it to okay that's all prepped and you can do that the same way as this one where you do it with the layers I'm not going to. I'm going to do this um, a little bit differently because I'm going to show you how to hand stitch it. All right. So what you're going to do, <clears throat> you are not going to iron. This is when you have to kind of watch your, watch your heat on it because you do not want your, you do not want your glue to adhere to anything. Okay. So I'm kind of lightly pressing my piece so that it's nice and smooth. This is going to be my orange. I'm taking my right side of my fabric and I am taking the glue side of the interfacing and I'm just going to kind of like lightly around that because I like to save, I like to save as much fabric as possible. So glue to right side, okay, and you're all going, oh no, it's not going to work, I promise. It's going to work. <laughs> I promise, I promise, I promise. Okay, so glue to right side like this. And you can pin it if you want. Um, it's just fabric. It's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to compromise any. Then you're going to take this over to the sewing machine, and you are going to sew just a basic stitch along that drawn line. Okay? So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to I'm going to stitch that. Just a basic stitch on that right on that drawn line. So, hang on one second, guys. I will be right back. Okay. I'm back. This is what it looks like. I know it's really hard to see. There's my stitched line stitched right on that line. Okay? This is what it looks like on the back. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come back in and you're going to trim all this excess fabric. And you're gonna leave, I, I tend to leave a fair amount. You're not gonna cut on the line. Do not cut on the line. Just cut maybe a quarter inch, eighth of an inch beyond that. See, we're just trimming, just trimming. Just trimming, just trimming, just trimming. You don't want it too close to the edge, but, and then when it comes into like these little dips like that, you wanna make sure you get into that. Your stitching is gonna do a lot of the work for you on this one. This is, this is my absolute favorite method um, because I can use it, I can use it in so many places. All right, so this is a fairly curved piece, all right? So just like any other sewing project, when you're doing a curved piece, you want to release those fabrics so that you get a nice, clean curve. So we're gonna go around and we're just gonna clip. And I could never understand why. I, I could never get it. Um, and you don't have to do it real close together, but when you, what happens is when you clip this and you turn it to curve, it spreads those fibers It'll spread those fibers apart and it just gives you a smoother, a smoother appearance. Okay. So take the time to do this. Just make, make sure you don't snip your, your seam. If you snip your seam, go back and sew it over. Sew over it. Not a big deal. 
You know how many times I've snipped seams doing this? Ugh. Let me count the ways. Just take it back to the machine. Sew over it. Sew a new seam just over that area. Not a big deal. It's not life ending. It, these always feel like forever. Okay, so then what you do, what you have is you have this little piece, and if you separate it like this, you have the interfacing and you have the fabric, okay? Kind of pull this interfacing away and cut a hole in it. Cut a hole. It doesn't have to be a big hole, and it doesn't have to be a, and it doesn't have to be fancy. Not a big deal. Just cut a hole okay and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this right sides out this is going to tear don't panic not a big deal not a big deal but come right and you just turn this turn this turn this do not press this now at this point do not go oh i want that seam nice and perfect i'm going to press it do not press it <laughs> ask me how i know <laughs> Um, do not press it. You can finger press this all you want. You can use your little clapper all you want. Kind of get that. But do not, do not press this with the iron. You're, you'll have glue everywhere. All right. So, and kind of get those curves all nice and neat where you want them. And they're going to curve out nice and nice and even. Okay. And then you're going to have a piece that looks like this. Big hole in the back. Not a big deal. I gotta pause this. A princess here um, needs to be put up on her chair. So I will be right back. All right, we're back. She's happy. Okay, so, so now you have a piece that looks like this, okay? This is your pumpkin shape. You're going to take your, your background piece and you're going to lay it out according to the picture, okay? According to the picture and you're going to kind of place it or the pattern what you know you're going to kind of place it so I'm going to place it right about there because you want your seam allowances and then we've got to put the stem and the leaf on and I'm going to show you a different technique for the for the stem and the leaf okay actually the leaf I might go back and do the fusible web because there's just so many like ins and outs of it. Um, but the stem, I'm going to show you a totally different, it's completely hands, hand sewing technique. Okay. So at this point you lay this out here. This is where you take it to your ironing board. Okay. And if you have all your pieces, you do this to all your pieces and you have them all layered here, or you could do them one at a time, whatever works for you. You cannot over iron this at this point. Um, the glue only sets what it's going to set. It's not going to get any stiffer. It's not going to, it's not going to get weird on you, that sort of thing. So you can lay all your pieces out like we did with this one and bring it to the iron, or you could do it one piece at a time, but this is the point you bring it to the iron. And this one, you can use a little bit warmer, warmer iron, and you can use a little bit of steam. Okay. Um, that's not a big deal because you want that glue, you want that glue to adhere through the fabric, through the interfacing to the background piece. So a lot of times what I do is I press it from the front and then I flip it over to the back and I press the back so that that glue is seriously stuck. <laughs> okay. So, Okay, and then look at how nice and neat and flat that is. It comes out nice and neat. Okay, so yeah, my curves are not perfect, but you can then applique this down. You can take this to the machine and you can do your satin stitch around this, or you could do your buttonhole stitch around this. Or once you have your blocks all like fused to this, this isn't going anywhere. This is super portable. If you wanted to do hand applique at this point, you could definitely do that. So I'm gonna show you how I would do a hand applique stitch. And I'm not an expert. I'm sure there's many, many, many other ways of doing it. 
and I'm sure there's very technical ways. Take a needle, matching thread. You definitely want matching thread. Um, you'll always hear me tout matching thread. I am, let's see, take your thread. Oh, of course, it's not going to thread for me. Look at that. Get my matching thread going here. If I can get it threaded. Holy moly. Of course, because I'm on camera. It's not going to thread. Let me try a different needle. Let me try a bigger needle because apparently... can't do this today all right don't you love live lo live videos don't you love my reel <laughs> the dogs are barking I can't thread a needle okay thread my needle do my quilters knot everybody's always fascinated with my quilters knot where you leave your thread on your on your spool you just wrap it around your finger knot it you don't have to knot twice here it's not a big deal okay so this is how I do my, my stitch. I just pick a spot, all right? And I come up from the bottom, because this is gonna be inside. It doesn't matter what your back looks like, right? This is gonna be on the inside. I come up right close. In fact, I'm grabbing the edge of that, the, going right through the backing, right into that applique piece, okay? and I'm pulling this thread up. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna take little tiny stitches and all you're doing is you're grabbing the backing, the background fabric and that very, very edge of your orange fabric. It, in this case, orange fabric. You don't want to grab the applique. So like if you're, if you come to a point where your applique is showing, like over here, my app or the applique, the fusible interface is showing a little bit, you want to make sure that you come up and you grab the fabric and it will pull that over that interfacing fabric and cover that up. So all you're doing is, hopefully you guys can see this, tiny stitches, tiny stitches. And I know there's applique needles out there and you're just grabbing that and you're stitching that down. Um, I, I never buy specific needles. I grab what I grab. Matching thread is key here because you want, you want your thread. And I'm going to get a couple stitches here. This is very soothing too. This is if you, if you like hand work. This is very, very soothing. And you'll get a rhythm. You'll get a rhythm where all your stitches are going in the same direction. Oops. And I see a lot of people's hand applique. I am not an expert at hand applique by any means. I've seen some beautiful, beautiful hand applique work and I am amazed by it. Um, I just dabble. But you're just grabbing the very, very edge of that fabric. See how that's done? With your matching thread. Okay. So you would just continue on until the whole piece is stitched. Or like I said, you could easily take this to the machine and do the same thing that we did with this piece. And you can buttonhole stitch it, you can satin stitch it, whatever. Um, I've seen that done too. I like this, I like this technique. Um, this is what probably my favorite of all the techniques. I fall on this one, and, and then I fall back on the fusible web for my smaller pieces and my more detailed pieces. So, like I said, the the leaf on this is pretty detailed, so I'm probably going to come back and I'm going to trace that onto fusible web. I'm going to put that on here and I'm going to stitch it down with my buttonhole stitch. I don't care if all my stitches match. I, 
it's it's no never mind to me I kind of like the texture of different stitches and different things going on um, I'm okay with it or I might come back in and do it by hand I don't know but I'm going to show you the third way of doing applique which is all by hand so this is the second way and this is this is part hands part machine okay so now let's move on to the third way the third way let me get my let me get it together here and we're just going to do a really small small piece is we're using freezer paper okay freezer paper this is what it looks like Reynolds freezer paper plastic coated comes in this huge huge roll I've had this roll for like 20 years I still haven't run out okay so we're gonna do just the stem because this is the most <laughs> tedious way of um, doing applique and it's not my favorite so I'm gonna show you real basic so you trace trace what you're going to stitch on okay You trace this out okay on the paper side of the freezer paper all right let me find my brown fabric here there's my little brown fabric then you are going to take your fabric take your piece of fabric And with the waxy side of fabric to the wrong side of the waxy side of the paper to the wrong side of the fabric, okay? You are going to iron that down. Just a light press, just a real light press, okay? Actually, I did it wrong. See, I already did it wrong. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut this paper on the line. See, ta-da. I was like, this isn't working out. This isn't what I want. And you can get a couple irons out of these patterns, out of these freezer papers. Okay, so then what you do is on your freezer paper, you cut all your patterns out, which is extremely monotonous. <laughs> so you're going to hear me wind through this whole process. So you cut your stem out on the line of the freezer paper. Then, waxy side to the wrong side, okay? And you're going to cut this, or you're gonna press that down. All right, so you have this. Your right side, your wrong side, you have your stem. All right, what you're going to do is, you're gonna come through and you're gonna need tiny scissors and you're going to cut a quarter of an inch. I know like really professional hand applicators do a lot closer. I can't, I, I'm just not that good. And you're gonna kinda, you're gonna cut around this shape, okay? Like this. And since this is pretty curvy, what we're going to do is we're gonna snip those threads all the way around. Not right to the paper though, just, just so that they'll lay smooth, all right? So you're gonna go all the way around like this. Where did I start? There I started, okay. So now you have your fabric and it's all like this. You're gonna take this back to the iron and you're going to fold this over with that paper there and you're going to press these all the way around that freezer paper. So let me show you. And they make little irons for this, but I don't do enough of this to actually purchase one. I tend to go with other forms of 
applique. But if you want to be a purist and you want to do things by hand and you think this is fun, um, which it can be, I mean, in small, for me, in small doses, it's just not my favorite. And you kind of have to work this. Kind of have to work this. And you burn your fingers a lot. And this takes a little bit of time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. This, this method takes a little bit of time, but if you don't have a sewing machine and you want to applique, this is how you can do it. Okay. And this is why we're only doing a small piece like this is because it, it, it is time consuming. So basically what you want to do is you want to create a crease. Okay, so mine is not perfect. Like I said, this is not my not my forte. I know how to do it. I can show you how to do it. You guys can practice it and run with it. So basically what you're doing is you're creating a crease so that it kind of looks like this, all right? Um, and then, so I'm gonna take this off the needle. Then what you're going to do is you're going to place this I'm going to take this fabric or this this off and you are going to place this my stem's going to be off a little bit you're going to place this here and you're going to pin it in place all right let me find my pins here you're going to pin it in place and you don't really have to worry about tucking that seam in at this point um because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be working it with your finger. Okay. I think it's called needle applique. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, and you kind of just pin this into place. All right. All right. So let me grab some brown thread. I didn't grab brown thread. Uh, so with your matching thread and your needle you're going to knot your thread And I always kind of start in, in a spot where I can kind of go up and around all in one swoop. I, I try to do as little stops and starts as possible, okay? Um, and in this situation, you want it to kind of be in a, you want your needles, I know they have applicating needles, which are like super, super fine and super, super tiny. Um, that's something that you can you can get. But you come up, you come up through your backing, all right? And what you're going to do is you're gonna use your needle to tuck to that. Let's see what I'm doing? I'm using my needle to tuck to that pressed seam that we created with the iron. And you're stitching it down. Same stitch as what we were doing over here. Just real tiny, tiny stitch, okay? And then you're taking your needle again, and you're tucking that down, holding it in place with your hand or your thumb. I to get that out of there. And stitching it down. And stitch. And yes, my stem is backwards. 
um, I should have done it, I should have mirrored it. So you're taking these little tiny stitches and stitching this down in place, okay? See what I'm kind of doing there? And then you're coming to this next little piece and you're tucking that in. Using your needle and your thumb, you're tucking that in and sewing it down, okay? And sewing it down. Once I get to this point, I'm perfectly content. I could do this all day. Um, this, this is very relaxing to me, this, this part of it. See, and you're just following that pressed, that little pressed um, seam that we made or that little pressed line and that's giving you your shape of your applique, okay? And like I said, I am not an expert in this area at all. I know there's specialty needles for this. I know there's specialty pins for this, but that is kind of how it looks. And then you just continue that on th for your whole stem, okay? So now, this is, this is a great technique if all you have is needle and thread with you and your fabric, okay? Um, this is totally hand-stitched. Hand now, when I said with the fusible interfacing that you could probably do this by hand also, when you lay this on here, you could do a running stitch around this by hand very, very easily. So you could stitch through this. I would just do like maybe two, go over it two times, then trim it out and do the reverse. So you could definitely do the fusible interfacing technique totally by hand also. So if you did not have, um, if you did not have a sewing machine on hand, you could definitely use this technique also. So. Okay, I'm gonna finish up these two projects. I am going to get them all done and complete. Um, and then I'm gonna show you what they look like at the end um, or in a follow-up video. So, I know this is a little bit longer video than I normally do, um, especially for a tutorial, but I wanted to show everybody the three different ways of applique. So I really, really hoped that you learned something. Um, if you did and you're loving the tutorials, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, um, comment, give me a thumbs up. It really helps to support the channel. It really helps um, me bring you more content like this. Um, basically, it enables me to stay home from my day job and stitch with you and <laughs> teach you guys how to do things. Um, flat out there, that's what it does. So hit that subscribe button. Um, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I love all you guys. You are great supporters um, and we're, I'm having a great time doing this. So when you are out and about into the world, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.